Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for how far he has led us. And we thank the Lord because of his molding hand, because of his melting hand, and because of his maturing hand. And I believe that as we have looked at this series on what the Lord Jesus Christ said about our call, about our commission, and about our consecration, I believe all that the Lord Jesus Christ had in mind when he called you to the ministry or into the profession in which you are now, the Lord will fulfill in Jesus' name. Yeah. We'll be taking this long journey. I will start the journey when I read to you in Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. And he, Christ, and he, the Savior, and he, the mediator between God and man, and he, our Redeemer, and he, the second person in the Trinity, and he says unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And as the Lord has given us that call, and then you responded to that call in consecration, the time comes when he commissioned the people. He told them, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you. And I've ordained you so that I can put you in place. And then you will go and bear fruit. And we come to that commissioning time right now. The hand of the Lord is upon you. And I rejoice with you because something good is coming out of you as a man as a woman from this very time on now understand there is an anointing in your life yeah. there is an authority that is placed in your life yeah. called commissioned consecrated and you are consecrated yeah. and when our pastor from anambra stage was greeting us and encouraging us he said something he said, everything that you have heard that the Lord has done through me, that the Lord will do it through you. Yeah. If you accept that as a word from the Lord, it's going to be fulfilled. Yeah. Because it's the same God. He has called you. He has commissioned you. And he consecrates and you consecrate yourself to the ministry. By the way, as we look at these words of Jesus Christ, and you find that we're still reading the same thing now, and he says unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. What am I saying on this now? I'm talking to you this time on Christ's continuous ministry. Christ's continuous ministry. He said it then. He's saying it now, and he will continue to say it until the last person gets into the kingdom. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, Christ's past creative ministry. He had a ministry in the past, and it was a creative ministry. The past creative ministry of Christ. Number two, Christ's present creative ministry in the present time is also having and manifesting and operating a creative ministry the present creative ministry of christ number three christ's perpetual creative ministry that perpetually until he comes he will continue to manifest himself and to exalt his name and to manifest his power. And everyone that comes perpetually, he takes you once again. And he reveals your life. And he develops your life. And you become the man or the woman that you ought to be. Let's quickly go to number one. Christ's past creative ministry. Why are we looking at his past ministry? Creative ministry. Because he said, I will make. And when somebody says, I will make, I want to look back to if he has made anything before this time. It's like you have a vehicle, you have a car, and it's broken down. 
and you want to get it repaired and you want to make it so repaired as if it were totally new brand new and then you take it to the mechanic and he says i can fix it for you i can do everything you think uh, that you really want in this vehicle and then you ask him have you dealt with something like this before oh yes he says i've done something like this before how was it at that time and then he brings you samples he said look at this i did this before look at this i did this before look at this i did this before then you have confidence in your heart if this same person did this before this present one i have he can do it that's why i'm going back to the beginning and i'm looking at christ's past creative ministry then i'll be able to have confidence in him when he says i will make i will create i will do something new again what did he do in the past must go back to genesis chapter 1 verse 26 genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and god said let us make man in our image let us make man in our image god the father was speaking to god the son and god the holy spirit and he said let us make 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 and here comes jesus in the present time and he says i will make and then i look at the past and i said it's done it in the past because the father said let us make man in our image oh that means that jesus christ has been in the business of making men men that will have dominion men that will have authority men that will have power men that will have boldness men that will be able to achieve men that will be able to accomplish let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth when i read that number one i am settled that if jesus christ was involved in making the whole universe and the whole world then my little world my little ministry my little personality he can make it i said he can make it uh, look at somebody that constructed aeroplane and then he constructed a vehicle and then i have a bicycle to be repaired and this man has repaired aeroplane that flies in the sky and he has repaired a motor vehicle that runs on the road and he has repaired a ship that sails on the sea and i have a little bicycle will i be afraid that he will not be able to repair my bicycle uh -uh. somebody who made the whole world somebody who created the whole world somebody who created the whole universe and after he has created the whole universe and then god looked at the work that he had made and he saw that everything was good very good then i come with confidence and i bring myself my soul my body my spirit i bring it to the factory of the lord jesus christ i said jesus i come i abandon myself into your hand i am in your factory make me all again and the lord will make you yeah. the past creative ministry of christ look at hebrews chapter one hebrews chapter one i'm reading to you from verses two and three hebrews chapter one verses two and three he has in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds you see that almighty god the father actually made the worlds by the power of the lord jesus christ that means then what we're looking at is jesus said i will make you there should be no doubt in your heart whenever he said i will and then you surrender yourself to his hand and because of his record and because of what he did in the past his creative work in the past now at the present time he says they want to make you and then you say lord i believe i trust i have confidence i have faith in you that you are going to do it because almighty god made the worlds through him who being the brightness of his glory the express image of his person up 
upholding all things by the word of his power. Not only that he made the world by his power at that time, is upholding everything by the word of his power. What does that mean to me? Uh, it means something to me. Well, as a person who is coming from my background, and when I look at the whole world, I see symmetry. When I say symmetry, everything is symmetrical. Everything is just in place. Look at the flower. You will see beauty and symmetry. Look at every leaf of every branch. You'll see beauty and symmetry. And look at the human life. When you divide the human person, you draw, you draw a line like this. This side is like this side. You'll see symmetry. When you look at the distance of the sun to the earth, you will see something, the wisdom of God. When you look at the proportion of the river, of the sea, to the land, you'll see the wisdom of God. When you see everything that God has made, everything is in order. Who did it? I said who did it God did it by who by Jesus and that Jesus said I shall bring myself to his factory that he has experience he's been doing it before he did it in the whole universe and everything is beautiful everything is wonderful everything is symmetrical and then I come to the factory and I'm telling by the time you see me you'll see that everything in my life will be all right Everything in my life will be wonderful because I bring myself into the hands of a person who made this beautiful, wonderful, symmetrical world. And then I say, he, he says, come, follow me. I will make you. I said, you can do it. You've done it before. And the Lord is coming to you now. And the Lord is saying, I did it in the past. Let me take over your life and make you a new person. And the Lord will do it. I said the Lord will do it. And he will uphold your life after he has done it. In John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Verse 3. All things were made by him. What am I worried about then? All things were made by him. And then it says, and without him was not anything made that was made. All things were made by him. All things were made by him. I'm thinking about that now. We're looking at the past creative work of Christ. Do you know how long, for how long, this uh, planet had been? For thousands of years. Thousands of years. And the Lord knew, listen to me, the Lord knew that the water that we will drink, when he created Adam and Eve, only two of them, and yet, he provided enough water that the children of Adam and Eve will drink, that the offspring of Adam and Eve will drink, and as the world continued to expand, see, all the water that we will drink, as you hear that the Americans are building spaceships, and they're going to the moon. Are they bringing water back from there? No, all the water that we will drink until we see Jesus face to face, everything is here ready for us. That means if the same Jesus that did that before I was born, and all the water I will drink, look, the petroleum that they think they are getting now in uh, this part of the country, the petroleum had been there before we came here. Everything had been here. All the resources had been here. All the gold, all the silver, all the iron, and Jesus made everything. And he calls me to the ministry. And I'm saying, Lord Jesus, I about the money I will spend in the ministry. I about the vehicle I will need for my gospel van. I about this and I about that. I about all the workers. And Jesus said, I made the world. And before you were born, I provided all the water. And now I've called you into the ministry. And I will make you. That means all the money I will need. Everything is there already. All the people I will need, every, everything is there already. You will never lack in your life. Your ministry will never lack any good thing. Because everything you will ever need, the same Jesus that created all the resources of the world before you were born, he has created everything without him. Was nothing made that was made. And because of that, I rejoice with you. A new thing is beginning in your life. You will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 7 verse 37. Mark 
chapter 7, verse 37. And they were beyond measure astonished, saying, He has done all things well. He has done all things well. Now, if you, if I told you, if you brought your vehicle to, you know, you brought your vehicle to somebody, and then you wanted to repair that vehicle, and you didn't know him before, and then he's telling you, I will repair your vehicle for you. And then you are wondering, can he do it and can he not do it? And there comes a person that is using a Volvo. And he says, he did my own and it was all right. Another person is using Mercedes Benz and he came and he did my own and it was all right. The other one using Volkswagen, he did my own and he did it well. The other one is using Lorry, he did my own and he did it well. And everybody came and they said, he did it for me. Will you have confidence in him? Look at Jesus Christ and as you meet Jesus Christ and he said, surrender your life to me. I will make you fishers of men. And while you are still wondering in your mind, can he do it? Can he not do it? A leper showed up and said, look at me. I was a leper. He did it for me. I'm all right. A blind man came. He did it for me. I'm all right. A lame man came. He did it for me and I'm all right. And then the relative of Lazarus came and said, what are you talking about? Leper. Give me a chance. Let me talk. And then my brother Lazarus was there for four days and Jesus with one word said Lazarus come forth and he came forth he did all things well and when I listen to those people I say Jesus do my own I say Jesus do my own I'm saying Jesus do my own and as you come to the Lord today and you are saying and he says follow me I will make you fishers of men and then you say Lord I come I come do my own he has started already not but you, Christ's present ministry. Christ's present ministry. When we're talking about his present ministry, he's still doing it today. You see, after he called Peter, then you find that that was not the end. In fact, he tells us in John chapter 5, verse 17. John chapter 5, verse 17. Here he tells us, but Jesus answered them, My father walketh either to, and I walk. Whenever you read your Bible, look at the verbs there. The verbs there. The verb here is the verb walk, to walk, to do something, to add something out, to operate, to, uh, to create, to make, and to manufacture. My father walketh either to, and I walk. Everything is in present tense. Although my father walked in Genesis, let us create man in our image. He didn't stop. At other time, he walketh either too. He has kept on walking. And I walk in the present tense. The Lord Jesus Christ is still in the creative ministry. When he did it for Peter, I will make you fishers of men. He didn't stop. And you know that later he called Paul the apostle. He also made him. He didn't stop. And, and, and right now, but now he's no more on the earth now. And we cannot see him in the physical now. Is he still walking? I said, is he still walking? Yes. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. In Romans chapter 8, verse 34, here is what he tells us. Who is he that condemneth? You will not be condemned again. Because the Lord Jesus Christ has come to take your condemnation away. It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us. He's still working today. Christ's present creative ministry. He's still working on you. He's still working on me. And he'll still keep on working. He'll keep on working in your ministry, your life, in Jesus' name. Yeah. And it's in the business of making, making other ministers and making new ministers. In Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 15. Acts 26, verse 15. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise, stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. What are the next words? To make thee. Already Jesus had gone to heaven. 
Already Jesus was no more on earth. When he was talking to Peter, he was on earth. And he was by the sea, by the shore of the sea. And then he told Peter, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Would you think, would you dream that because Jesus died, and because he was buried, and because he rose up, and because he ascended to heaven, he's no more here, that because he's no more here, he's no more making effective ministers, making effective leaders, this verse will prove you wrong. Because it says, while speaking from heaven, while he appeared to Paul, the apostle, who was Saul of Tarsus, he said, I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of the things, of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. I have appeared to you now, and it is to make you, and I will keep on appearing to you. Since you came here Thursday, Friday, and day Saturday, as the Lord appeared to you, yes. as the Lord spoke to you, yes. the Lord will keep on speaking to you. Yes. And the Lord will keep on energizing you. Yes. And the Lord, and he has started already making you, making you, and you'll be the man that you ought to be. And then it says in verse 17, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Don't have any fear in your heart. The Lord will never leave you. The Lord will never forsake you. And as the Lord is sending you out, is sending you out with protection. Is sending you out with a covering. Is sending you out. The, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth into it and is saved. You are, you are protected and you are secured in Jesus' name. And as you go, what are you going to do? Verse 18, to open their eyes. You will open their eyes. I said you will open their eyes. You see, there are many people, they limit miracles. They say, yes, I know God is mighty. I know God is wonderful. I know God is great. And God is able to do great things. But they think he'll do it through him. He'll do it through her. They say, not me. But the time has come. You will not escape miracle. Uh, you know, in, uh, you, when you, if you believe whatever you believe, God will do it for you. I said God will do it for you. Yeah. I am coming from Lagos. And you know, we have, I told you yesterday, we have many kinds of workers in our church. We have ushers, we have singers, we've seen them. We have those who play instruments, we've seen them. We have quite a lot of workers. Uh, but we're having a revival, a revival service on Thursday in Lagos. And there was a woman that brought uh, her husband. And this husband was totally paralyzed. And I said, uh, this uh, woman came in a taxi to the, in front of the church. She needed somebody to help her carry out the, hus carry out the husband so that they will sit the husband down. And then when it comes to time for the pastor to pray, that is me, then the pastor will say, you are there, you have this problem in the name of Jesus. They receive your miracle. That's what the wife was thinking about. And so when they parked the vehicle, and so the wife came out of the vehicle and the man was inside the vehicle. But I told the people, uh, maybe I'm going to repeat that message, uh, you know, one of these days. What is written concerning me? What is written concerning me? Because something is written concerning you in the Bible. I said something is written concerning you in the Bible. You know, I told you the other time when I was talking about the gifts of the Spirit, that maybe I will come back here and then take you through a series on the gifts of the Spirit. But you know, even though I gave you that promise, the Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. And so if you don't see me, if you don't see me next year, it means you are not asking. Praise the Lord. And so if you ask, you know, your leaders from the southeast are here, if they keep on asking and keep on, because Jesus said ask, Jesus said seek, and Jesus said knock, let me do some, you know, I like, some people, they were asking me, you know, when I went to Germany last week, and they said, how is it your mathematics and your preaching, the Bible, how do you connect that together? Oh, that gave me a chance to talk, you know, if you want me to talk, just ask me about both mathematics and preaching, and I can talk. I said I can talk, you know, but it's, God bless you, it's when I come back, I will talk the rest to you. Now, ask, what's the first letter for ask? Seek, what's the first letter for seek? Knock, what's the first letter for uh, knock? When you put that together, A-S-K, what is that? I told you now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
you know if you keep on asking i will come back i said i will come back now and you know it, it, there's something you got for me since i started with you on Thursday. you see i tell one story and while i'm telling that story i keep the uh, dramatics of the story i keep them waiting i tell another story and then i come back to them you remember that i told you of the woman that brought the husband in a taxi <laughs> praise the lord and you know as the lord said as your days are so shall your strength be you know some people when they are getting older they keep forgetting things as i'm getting older i keep remembering things <laughs> praise lord now you know this uh, woman then called one of our lady usher said uh, lady usher please help me let's take my man my husband down and the lady usher said don't touch him and the lady usher said uh, sir come out and then the wife said you don't understand my husband is paralyzed and because he's paralyzed he cannot walk help me so we can carry him out and then when the pastor is praying then miracle will come upon him and the lady usher had, uh, acted as if she didn't understand she said sir come out and then the woman they kept on dragging it with themselves i said please help me and carry my husband down so that at the time of prayer she will be well and the lady usher said in the name of jesus come out and the power of god struck that man in the taxi and he came out if an usher an usher she wasn't an evangelist she wasn't a prophet she wasn't an ordained pastor she wasn't a bishop an usher she believed what is written concerning me that i will decree a thing and it shall be established and that man came out that same power of god is upon your life and because the lord has made you now a new person a new minister and the power of god and the dynamite of the spirit of god is upon your life already in verse in verse 18 to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of satan unto god that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me number one christ's past creative ministry number two christ's present creative ministry number three christ's perpetual creative ministry christ's perpetual creative ministry what the lord did in the past perpetually he will keep on doing it and over here this weekend there is no weak person anymore here let the weak say i am strong let the poor say i am rich and let the let the sick say i am healed you are healed you are delivered the lord has lifted you up there's a perpetual ministry of the lord jesus christ and he keeps on touching your life he keeps on making you he keeps on molding you and he will not stop until he brings you to perfection yeah. hebrews chapter 13 hebrews chapter 13 i'm looking at verse 8 hebrews 13 verse 8 it says jesus christ the same yesterday and today and forever perpetual ministry what he did before is going to do again i said what he did before is going to do again because he is in the process of making you making you the man making you the woman that you ought to be there is a new strength there is a new anointing there is a new authority and there is a new power upon your life always remember it's the same yesterday it's the same today and it's the same forever what he did in all these other men we're reading about the same thing is going to do in you and you start at the point where you are look at us now look up here see the way i am walking there's a time i was a little baby i could not walk maybe you are at a particular stage now and maybe you are not walking as other people but the time is coming you will walk yeah. you will run yeah. you will jump yeah. you will climb mountain yeah. whatever you cannot do now tomorrow is there you will do it yeah. 
look at the language that was speaking now. Was there not a time when we couldn't even pronounce anything at all? Look at us now talking for one hour or for more than one hour and we keep on talking and there was a time you couldn't even pronounce one word and now you are doing it. What you couldn't do yesterday, you can do today. There was a time you couldn't even put food in your own mouth and somebody will put food in your mouth and now look at you now. You eat whatever you want anytime what you couldn't do yesterday you are able to do today do you remember when we're learning to write a b c and then somebody mama will take our hand and then they hold the pencil and then put our hand and be tracing a b c and you are thinking in your mind why will i be able to write all these funny letters and then when they tell you to write your own, you write it like this. It is bending this way and bending this way. I say, no, that's not how to do it. Then they put your hand again. Look at the way you are writing now. You are hearing, you are writing. You are seeing, you are writing. You are talking, you are writing. It is very easy now. What appeared difficult yesterday will be easy today. Yeah. And so whatever you have not been able to do, you will do it eventually. Because Jesus Christ said, I will make you, and it will make you. Yeah. In, uh, in Isaiah chapter 46, Isaiah chapter 46, we're looking at it from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 4. And even to your old age, I am he. I thought you'll give me a good amen. Yeah. Even to your old age, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and I will deliver you. Verse 10, declaring, from the, declaring the end from the beginning. From the ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. What's the pleasure of Jesus Christ to make you? Officials of men, effective leaders, courageous leaders, and leaders that will not experience failure. And he said, I will do all my pleasures. And then in verse 11, calling a rabbinous birch, birch uh, from the east, and the man that executed the counsel, my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it and I also will do it. I have purposed it. I planned it. What has he purpose? Follow me. I will make you fishers of men. He has said it. It must be done. He has declared it. It must come to pass. He has purposed it and he must do it. And then we're told in Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah 41, I'm starting from the latter part of verse 9. Isaiah 40, 41, latter part of verse 9. Thou art my servant. Anybody here? Thou art my servant. Anybody there? Thou art my servant. He says, I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Tell the person by your side, the Lord has chosen me. Tell him, the Lord has chosen me. He will not cast me away. Uh, you know, uh, they, 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 were, they, were, they were children. You know how children are. In this particular family, husband and wife. And these husband and wife, they had a number of children. And as they had the children, maybe about three or four, then the parents decided they were going to have another child, adopt a child to bring into the family. And the, the other children, natural children, biological children, they became jealous because daddy and mommy, they are buying the same clothes for this one that, uh, you know, they are buying for us. And it's not part of us. It's only an adopted child. And so one day they were talking together. These other children, and they were pointing to him. They say, you're eating too much. You are getting this too much. You are getting this too much. After all, you are just an adopted child. And for a moment, the child felt a little bit unhappy because it's like, you know, they're saying, you don't belong here. And so the child replied and said, Daddy had no choice. You were forced on Daddy. But I, I was chosen. I said I was chosen. That means then, because you are chosen, some, God saw something in you. And he looked everywhere. 
and in your whole family he bypassed this bypassed this bypassed this and chose you and then in your stage he was looking for somebody to be an evangelist and somebody to become a pastor and somebody to become a preacher and he looked at this he said no looked at that said no look at that and then he saw you and he said that's my man there and the lord chose you and because he said i have chosen you you are chosen i said you are chosen and because he has chosen you then he says i will not cast you away thank god it will not cast me away i said it will not cast me away i about you he will not cast me away then in verse 10 fear thou not i am with thee as you are living here the hand of the lord is upon you be not dismayed for i am thy god i will strengthen thee i will help thee i will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness behold all they that were instanced against thee shall be ashamed and confounded they shall be as nothing and they that strive for thee shall perish thou shalt seek them and shall not find them even them that contended with thee they that war with against thee shall be as nothing as a thing of naught and I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand. Saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou one Jacob. And ye men of Israel, I will help thee. Says the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Verse 15. Read it out along with me. Want you. He says, Behold, look at it. I am doing something new in your life, in your family, in your ministry. Behold, I will make you a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. You become, you are now an instrument in the hand of God. Yes. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff once again i come to you this afternoon and i throw the challenge at you the lord jesus the creator of the heavens and the earth is saying unto you and is saying follow me and i will make you fishers of men i come into the factory of the lord jesus christ and i stretch myself before him i say lord here am i make me what you want to make me rise up and let him make you he will make you he will make you the man you ought to be he will make you the woman you ought to be and there is there is no failure there is no defeat because the hand of the lord is upon your life from today i will make you i will make you i will make you i will make you fishers of men the calling of god our consecration to god and then our commission from the lord he has commissioned you called consecrated commissioned in jesus name we pray everybody give me a good amen would you want to raise up your two hands to the lord called consecrated commissioned the lord is sending you out with a great commission the lord has chosen you he will not cast you away the hand of the lord is upon you and the anointing of the lord is upon your life the authority and the power of the holy ghost is going with you you will not fail you will win souls the church will be edified through your ministry and the lord has started working with you he will continue this perfect work he will continue this practical work he will continue this perpetual work and until you do everything he has called you to do it will not stop in your life father in the name of jesus 
we come to you this afternoon and lord i pray a new anointing will come upon all my brothers and sisters here in jesus name a new power a new authority new divine energy new dynamite will come into them in jesus name everywhere you have sent them they will go every word you have given them they will speak and the ministry you have called them into they will effectively pursue it and they will do it effectively in jesus name lord all the good testimonies we're hearing people getting saved you'll do it through them people getting healed miraculously you'll do it through them i pray lord you make them until you can show them even to the angels of heaven and say look at the handiwork of my hand oh lord all these men and women here they will do great experts for the lord in jesus name you take inability or weakness away from everybody and give them your strength and give them the divine ability lord we'll continue to hear good good stories about everyone thank you lord because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray thank you very much